Hi, this is Jen at Making the Photo. Recently, Midjourney rolled out an upscaler to enhance version 5.2 and the current version of Niji. Let's take a deep dive into this new tool and see how it works. The Midjourney team is calling this a subtle upscaler, which means it doesn't significantly change the details of your original image. In the past, we've seen upscalers for version 3 and version 4, and these were more creative upscalers. This means they changed or reprocessed the image during the upscale. Sometimes you ended up with a surprise. Upscaling might eliminate details that you wanted to keep or even significantly change your image. So why would we want an upscaler in Midjourney? Well, it might not make much of a difference to you if you only show your images online. But upscalers generally clean up and sharpen edges. And with more resolution, you can print your images at a larger size. And even better, you can zoom into an image and crop out the parts that you don't want. This leaves you with a cleaner image and plenty of pixels to work with. When you upload an image from the grid, you now get two extra buttons. You can upscale by two times or upscale by four times. Your initial upscale is 1024 by 1024 or 1 1.7 megabytes. And because of the way Midjourney version 5 works, upscaling is simply pulling your image out of the grid and not really upscaling. That's why clicking the U buttons work so fast. The images are already at their full resolution. If you click the two times upscaler, your image becomes 2048 pixels square, and that increases the file size to almost seven megabytes. You can also upscale by four times, making your image 4096 by 4096 square. And this creates an image that's a whopping 25 megabytes. Now one thing to watch, you'll only see the upscale results if you go onto the Midjourney webpage. If you're using the quick and easy way of downloading your images by right clicking on the Discord image, it won't change the resolution. You're not going to get the benefits of the upscaler. So first click go to web and from the web, save your image. Now initially the upscalers only worked in fast mode, but now they seem to be working in relaxed mode too. It doesn't seem to work in turbo mode, so if I turn on turbo mode, it still renders in fast mode. But mid-journey upscaling takes some time. The 2x upscaler takes about, I don't know, two and a half minutes in fast mode to render. And upscaling an image by four times took me somewhere between three and five minutes to render. So this isn't something you're probably going to use for every single image. Now we can make our images larger than 4096 pixels square by using aspect ratios. I often use 16 by 9 aspect ratios, and if I upscale it by four times, I'm getting an image that's almost 6,000 pixels wide. And I did a little bit of testing. If I make an image in a 1 by 16 aspect ratio, and I upscale it by two times, I'm getting somewhere in the region of 8,000 pixels on the long side. I did try to upscale this image by four times, and it didn't render. I didn't get exactly an error, but the process was disabled. So there seems to be a limit in pixel size. These upscalers will let you get somewhere around nine or 10,000 pixels on the long side. So what about coupling the pan tool with the upscaling tool? Pan tool actually adds resolution to your image. So if you've not noticed this, if you upscale an image and then pan in one direction or another, it adds about 50% to your image. But if you pan and then zoom, it snaps back to the default aspect ratio. So can we use pan and upscale? Well, the short answer is no. Once you pan your image, you won't see the upscale buttons. And once you upscale an image, you're not going to get the pan, zoom, or variation buttons. 
So right now you sort of have to choose between using the pan feature or the upscale feature. And for some of your other workflow, you'll want to make upscaling the last thing you do since you won't have the variation buttons or the zoom buttons to work with. Now, can you upscale older images? Some of them. It works only with version five images, but if you made a version five image in the past before the upscalers came out, there's a couple of different ways you can get those upscale buttons to show up. The easiest way is to use the show command and the job ID. To get the job ID for the image you want, either send yourself a message using the envelope emoji or go to the website and find the image. There's a place you can copy the job ID. Now in the message bar type slash show and paste in the job ID. When the image appears, you'll have the upscale buttons. Now this only works in version five. It doesn't work in version four or version three. So now you know how to upscale. Let's look at the quality of these upscales. We're going to do a little comparison here between the original and the two times upscaler. It looks like the 2x upscaler sharpens the edges a bit. And there's even kind of a halo or a, an outline to sharpen those edges. The 4x upscaler is a little softer than 2x, but the edges are sharper than the original upscale. I've not yet figured out what the redo buttons do because it seems to be the same image. So how is Midjourney doing in the grand scheme of things? There are a lot of upscalers on the market, some free, some paid. Gigapixel AI is the one I use and it's the industry standard. So let's compare what Gigapixel AI does with what Midjourney does. Let's open our original upscale in Gigapixel AI and upscale it by two times. And what about the Photoshop Super Zoom Neural Filter? I actually prefer Midjourney's upscales to the Super Zoom feature. So Midjourney upscalers compare well with some of the competition. But with Gigapixel AI, you can make images that are much higher resolution than just 4X. And you have a lot more control over the output. But Gigapixel AI comes at a price. And both Gigapixel AI and Photoshop are much, much faster than Midjourney. On speed alone, Midjourney disappoints. In version five, the initial upscale from the grid is free, but the new upscales do cost. Upscaling by two times is roughly the same amount of GPU it costs to create a new image grid. But to upscale by four times, it costs about three times the price. There are a few hiccups with the new upscaler. Initially, there were reports that the images in the four times upscaler were soft, but it seems that the team has tweaked the upscaler for a better result, and there are kind of mixed feelings about this. The upscalers don't work with all parameters either. For instance, you can't upscale a dash dash tile image. It also seems that some users aren't seeing upscales in their gallery, and I was experiencing this as well when I was doing some testing. And because this upscaler is faithful to the original image, it won't fix any problems. 
If the detail isn't in the original image, it also won't be in the upscaled version. And some users would really like to see a more creative upscaler. So in general, the new Midjourney upscalers are performing well. If you need a high resolution image, you can do it now inside of Midjourney without going to a third party upscaler. The upscalers don't just make the image larger in size, it generates a crisper image. There are some limitations, but it's still early days, and we hope to see those fixed soon. Try out the new Midjourney upscaler and tell us what you think about it in the comments below. This is Jen from Making the Photo. Let's make something amazing together.